The Man in Line with Andy Wint. Fast of I, good afternoon. Well, tomorrow it's a special program. It's all about the proposed assisted dying legislation that Dr. Allenson is uh, taking through Timwald at the moment. So it's an open line today. If there's something you want to get off your chest, today is the only time you can do it until Monday. So text 166-177, email studio at manxradio.com. Call 66-1368. And first, uh, Wolf's with us. Hi, Wolf. I, uh, I, uh, I got some good news. Oh, lovely. For a, cha- for, for a change. Uh, I got a phone call yesterday from a uh, building firm. It's KEL Developments Limited. And they say, we will repair the RAF for you for free. Oh, fantastic. Uh, yeah, they will do it for free. They will do it right away. And the kids will have it in a week or two or whatever, as soon as we, when they get started. So I put this to the commissioners last night. Um, oh, yes, wonderful, all the rest of it. The only thing I've got with it is uh, I give them the, the man's number and they haven't rung him yet. And I thought they'd be right on it, you know what I mean? Well, that's fantastic. So what's the company called again? It's K-E-L. Now, don't tell me what... I don't know what that stands for. Okay. But it's K-E-L Developments Limited. Okay. Uh, I've, I've dealt with them before, and they're a very good firm. Okay, well... And they've got, they've got five joiners ready to go. And how soon could they have it finished, do you know? Well, they said it would only take about a week or so as soon as they got started. Oh, that's good, because you know, the school's got a couple of weeks before they break up, haven't they? That's it, that's it. So hopefully, hopefully we got, we, we're going to have the raft back. Okay. So, Is the chain still there? Yes, yes, that's all still there. It's, uh, there was stupid talk about putting uh, four anchors out for it, which is total nonsense. It only wants one anchor. The, 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 the block that's there must weigh several tons. That block ain't going anywhere. Uh, it just needs a central chain on it so it can spin. It should have, it should have a, um, a swivel on it so it can turn by itself. Uh, they probably haven't thought of that, though, you see, because they never come and ask me anything. So um, I was going to do the building of it, but the, the commissioner said that they would do it. And of course, they... They didn't take any notice, and they built it wrong, so there okay. we go. Uh, what's, where are they getting the wood from? Oh, they will supply the wood. Right, OK. Well, they do everything, they said. Uh, right, OK. Well, well done to the, the commissioners for approving that. Thanks to KEL, uh, the builders, uh, for doing that as well. And uh, when it starts, will you be out? Will you be the first person on the raft, Wilf? I'll sit on it when the tide is out and wait for the tide to come in. All right. And then when it goes out again, I'll get off it. All Hope right. All right. Thanks for that. Keep us informed, Will. Thanks for that. Right. OK, I'll do that. Cheers now. All right. It's 10 past 12 on Manx Radio. Well, that's the good news, isn't it? The, uh, the, the raft could be, uh, could be operative uh, by the, uh, the beach in Ramsey. And uh, who knows what will happen? Uh, schools break up. I'm trying to remember the schools break up uh, Friday, 21st of July, isn't it? So uh, hopefully it'll be finished before then as well. Lots happening in the next few weeks. Of course, this Saturday is Parish Walk Day. Uh, the Allen Games are two weeks this Saturday, and a couple of days after that, the Southern 100 starts. It's all happening. Oh, and a week next Wednesday, it's uh, Tinwell Day. Crikey, it never stops, does it? Uh, the Treasury Minister, Dr Allenson, says that Ireland communities need a range of options to be able to deal with empty and dilapidated properties. Follows a Timwall motion from Jason Morehouse, MHK, to make owners of those buildings pay 20% extra in rates. We'll hear from Dr Allenson in a moment, but first this. Hello, um, I'm phoning in. Um, it was talking 
talking about e- the cancellation of EasyJet. Last Sunday, my nephew uh, was on the island and was meant to go back on Sunday. He's a surgeon at Southampton, and he, he, he'd been cancelled off uh, for uh, going back um, the following, uh, the, uh, that, that day, Sunday. The following day, he was meant to um, have a running a clinic morning and afternoon at Southampton Hospital. And Tuesday, he was meant to uh, have his operation day. So he had to sort of contact all those people um, that he was meant to see on the Monday uh, for the clinic day. And meanwhile, he tried every avenue to get off the island, and it was of no avail at that time. He tried uh, even steam packet, and they couldn't give him. He was he was a walk on on passenger. Um, they couldn't give him a place and for for three days. So that was too late for his clinic and too and his, too late for his operation days, which was Tuesday. So uh, eventually he did get off on the Monday, although he had to cancel the patients, as I said. But um, he had to go via Dublin and work and, and got connections back to uh, uh, Gatwick, which was where he left his car and then uh, pick up his car from there. Um, yes, so people, he's not the only one who have at the other end lives that they, they're committed to. And, you know, they're just treated uh, uh, people as if they've got no lives and, uh, and commitments. So uh, it's something's got to be done for this condition. Uh, of um, cancelling, uh, just cancelling um, flights. Thank you. Bye. Well, that's just another story, a story that um, I'm sure there are many more as well that are impacted by the fact that our planes don't run on time all the time. And we know the reasons why. We know they're short of air traffic controllers. Historically, how we came about, of course, is, well, it's not the current management's fault. It's what's happened over the past few years with the fact that air traffic controllers weren't replaced and our air traffic control cover is down and down and down and because of mandatory rest breaks, rest periods that have to be taken by law, the airport's not open all the time. And sometimes when airlines, aeroplanes and routes run into delays, they need to be flexible. And there's no flexibility because we don't have enough air traffic controllers. What it makes it look like in terms of holiday traffic, in terms of professional traffic, we are an international finance centre, remember, by the way. There are people wanting to do business on the Isle of Man, to bring investment and to bring jobs. What it makes us look like, well... I'll leave that to you. But how we get out of it, we'll see. So this is uh, uh, Allenson, Dr. Allenson, who's talking, the Treasury Minister, who's talking about what we do about dilapidated and empty properties, the eyesores, the brownfield sites, if you like, that uh, are around the Isle of Man. Just um, another symptom of something that's been left to go unchecked, and suddenly we, we get used to them, but other people point them out, and suddenly you notice something looks an absolute mess. Dr. Allenson proposed an amendment to cover empty properties. Legal definitions of what is a vacant or derelict building are lacking from the Ratings and Valuation Act 1953. These need to be published and agreed. Local communities need a range of options to bring buildings back into use. Douglas Borough Council have written to me expressing their frustration that despite feeding into the Treasury's consultation on domestic rates in March 2015 and again in April 2019, they feel effectively powerless. Treasury has worked with the Ramsey Town Commissioners to understand the extent of the problem in their town. Now is the time to empower, to reverse the status of zero rating where appropriate and introduce a range of discretionary penalties to bring buildings back into use or trigger their disposal for development. The amendment before you expands on the original motion to include all empty properties. 
It commits the Treasury to look at the current legislation and decide how it can be strengthened, either through an escalation of rates or other financial penalties to penalise those who deliberately allow properties to remain vacant and become derelict. This work has complexity, especially as properties may remain empty for a host of personal reasons, but the amendment commits to me returning to this Honourable Court in November with a plan and realistic timetable to start this much needed and much requested reform. Well, uh, they'd look a mess. Uh, you know, we all have to look at things that look a mess, dilapidated properties, uh, run-down properties that just aren't getting done up. So I wonder what you think about Dr Allenson's plan to do something ab about it. And this. Uh, this fits in really with uh, the video that Charles Gard has uh, brought out. The Charles Gard, a year since his first video, highlighted the less than appealing side of Douglas, uh, the heritage campaigner, historian Charles Gard, and fine harp player, it has to be said, has released another. Uh, last time Charles Gard took aim at the rusted barriers of Marine Drive, collapsed walls along the sunken gardens, and the unfinished horse tram tracks. This time, as well as catching up on the progress of those sites, he's highlighted a number of abandoned developments around uh, the, the capital. Uh, if you live or work around the capital, you've probably seen them, or maybe you don't notice them anymore. The video is titled, the film's titled, Welcome Back to the Isle of Man. This is Charles Gard. Sadly, it is, as I've made clear, I hate, absolutely hate making these sort of videos. And this one particularly kept me awake at night. You know, who am I to be criticising Tinwald and they've got so many problems and so on. Uh, they've got enough on their plate without me going on about it. But then I felt that... Um, if I didn't say this, uh, nobody else uh, seems to be saying. A lot of people think what I've been saying, and the response in the street of people coming up to me saying, "I so agree with what you what you've said." Um, I just felt I should perhaps voice those views. Um, it is, of course, just my opinion. It could be argued, couldn't it, that Tim Wood is an easy target for this. I mean, surely it doesn't fall just into their responsibility. This is the Isle of Man. This is a, a community problem, surely. You're absolutely right. Criticising the government is so easy. Uh, you get this in the UK. Every interview is the government should do this, the government should do that. And frankly, I don't know how they get up in the morning because they've got all these problems. But the ones that I've highlighted have been hanging around for years. I mean, literally years. And having done the video last year and members emailing me saying, yes, I so agree with you, nothing has been done. I'm particularly concerned about these developers who start a development. We've got one at the bottom of the road here next to the Trafalgar. They leave a huge mess. They clear off and you never see them again. Now, are the government doing anything about this? Why shouldn't a developer like that who's going to spend millions of pounds be required to deposit a bond of £100,000 with the government fully repayable with the interest if the project is completed. If it's not, the government at least have some money to restore that site and put it back um, in a decent state till the next developer comes along and says he'll have a go. And does anyone check whether these developers actually have the money to do these? Because we've got the one in Duke Street. Who's ever going to sort that out? And those are simple things that I would have hoped some members would have brought a resolution forward to at least debate it and maybe get some legislation changed. But nothing's happened. So what would success look like to you with regards to, to the reaction to this latest video then? A proper discussion in Tinwald would be a very good place to start. And a week tomorrow, Charles Gard's going to be our man in line, so you can actually talk to Charles if you want to. A week tomorrow, Charles Gard will be uh, talking about the videos that he's made, and um, uh, well, I can tell you anyway, Charles said it himself in the, uh, in the um, uh, speech he just gave. Charles doesn't actually like making these videos. It gives, gives him no fun whatsoever to make a very good job of pointing out these things. Charles Gard, may, I don't know whether you remember, do you remember the Happy Holidays videos with Terry Kringle looking back? At, Charles Gard made those. He's made Curiosities of the Isle of Man, uh, the Isle of Man from the Air. You can still see that. If you go to Charles Gard uh, website, you can see his tour of the Isle of Man. He relishes making good videos about the beautiful Isle of Man. But uh, there's a man who's been driven to do these videos about things that aren't right about the Isle of Man. We'll find out more about what Charles thinks a week tomorrow and uh, you can chat to him as well. Stephen's uh, on now. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Andy, and good afternoon, listeners. I, I would like to offer a, 
a slightly alternative uh, viewpoint of the motion uh, about rates and the motion, the amendment from Dr. Allenson, where they both would appear to be all about stick and uh, and uh, punishing people rather than trying to find solutions. I'm a great believer in in trying to find solutions which can help people move along. Now, uh, Andy, you were at the meeting where we were discussing the Westmoreland Village. Yes. And uh, what I think the analogy is with this is if you're if the, the great idea at the time suits those in power within government, then that is what uh, becomes uh, what happens, and that's where the money goes. So firstly, I'd like to suggest that Westmoreland Road Development Village is not a village. It's a, it's a huge, complex development that is, um, is massively... Uh, uh, Trying to put not many powers of the one was originally agreed by the uh, by the strategic plan and the area plan for the east. That's by the by. So that's just setting the stall out. And the amount of money that this company has is able to raise is tens of millions of pounds. So just let's look at the uh, vacant properties uh, for one minute. The vacant properties have happened over many years, and some could argue that a lot of the problem stems back to 2013 when the decision was taken by, I think it was Howard Quayle, who was in a position of, of a department then, who withdrew or cancelled the ability for grants and loans to be available for older properties. So that's point one. I do think that if we are to try and get these older properties back on to the market and back into habitation. They'll need funding. And uh, at the moment, certainly in the UK, house prices have slowed down due to the high interest rates. I've met several people here who've been advised that possibly renting is a better way rather than selling at the moment if they want to get rid of a property. And repossessions in the UK has increased. Now, we're not going to be immune from these problems. So I've got a couple of suggestions. One is if there's a vacant property that's been vacant for many, many years and people can't, after all due diligence has been taken, they can't find the owner, could that be sold in the same way as vacant bank accounts are used to fund good causes? So could a vacant property that's impossible to find the owner, could that be sold back into the market raising whatever they can get to possibly developers who will uh, bring them back in. Grants and loans to be included. Um, um, I hope that as this as this motion goes forward and Dr. Allenson's amendment comes forward, then MHKs will amend it to include these things. I don't know anybody will, but maybe they'll be listening. So I think that should happen. Grants and loans should come forward. I'm not entirely sure how many how many houses out of the six thousand that we're talking about do not pay rates. So it would be interesting to know what's the percentage of these six thousand empty properties that don't pay rates. Because uh, I'm sure a number that, of people will be paying rates on them, and possibly we need to know why. But if anybody has ever tried to get a loan or a mortgage on an older property, if it's in any way uh, got problems, then it's impossible to get loans and mortgages for older properties because you need a, a roof survey, an electrical survey, plumbing survey, etc., etc. So... The, it's impossible to then get somebody who just wants a simple mortgage on them. So I do think that government should govern and should govern properly and not just try and punish people, but try and come up with solutions in a, in a realistic way to try and bring these properties back in. As I say, there is a huge fund that's, that the MDC has got to build new houses. Now, the Westmoreland Road site, in, any, in my book, it's certainly not a brownfield site. It's going to cost many millions to buy the entire site up from the private uh, people who are currently running sites there and got houses on it. 
So if they're prepared to do that for the NDC, why aren't they prepared, they being the government or the various departments of government, why aren't they provi- prepared to provide these funds as well if they're doing it to bring the brownfield sites into operation with properties? Because if logic follows, we'll still have these 6,000 properties uh, at the end of the uh, procedure with MDC building on them. Uh, would so you would you advocate this as a central government issue or would it be a local authority issue? Because there'd have to be some discretion. You know, if, as you say, somebody's got a, or there's a, a derelict property that's owned by somebody, let's just say an elderly person who doesn't have the funds or the will to do something with that property, who, who will be the prime mover behind that? Who'd get that moving? Well, I'm, I'm not sure, and I think these things have got to be looked at realistically. I would have hoped, I would have preferred this whole business, whole episode, to have gone to a select committee uh, to look at these issues of what, why they're not being, to try and find out why they're, why we got six thousand derelict property. That's a huge number on a small island, and then to come up with solutions of how to bring them back into use. Because as you say, Andy. If you've got an elderly person who owns a property, they might have been left the property, they can't sell it because uh, uh, the buyers don't want it. Possibly there's no property developers, builders who are prepared to buy them, to do them up. So it's it's certainly, you might recall a few years ago, there was whole streets in Liverpool where they decided to uh, sell them for a pound and then let the let the new uh, owners come along and uh, and spend the money on them. But I do think we're going to need central government to come up with solutions as well. And it's no, use, no good just taking people to court and saying, well, we're going to double your rates bill if you haven't paid the rates bill, and offer no solutions, because they are doing so. Because my point is they're making solutions available for the Brownsfield sites. They're providing funding for that. But on the other hand, of all these 6,000 properties, there's no solutions and uh, funding help to uh, bring them back into use. And that, to me, is, is wrong. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a very interesting point that, uh, obviously, Max Development Corporation, its shareholder is Treasury, and presumably its banker is Treasury. Absolutely, the banker is Treasury, but being the taxpayer. And there's nothing wrong with the idea, but to suggest... That uh, that we can do something on the one hand with uh, with brownfield sites, and on the other, all the individual houses which are in streets along the old towns and city of Douglas, there is no help whatsoever. I would have thought that's discriminatory to start with. Okay, Stephen, thanks for calling today. Good to hear from you. Thanks for that. And Tony's with us now. Hi, Tony. Hi, Andy. How you doing? Well, very good, thank you. To follow on from the gentleman before, I don't think we should have anything to do with the rates. I think that's a misnomer. That's, that's just going down the wrong road. Because that became, comes down to the local councils. And it's not a local council issue. I think the government needs to end, put through legislation that says anybody who owns a property that's lying empty for X number of years will be fined. X amount first year, Y the second, X times four the, set of the four, third year, etc. And then on the sliding scale, that money should then go into a fund, which will be ring fenced, not given to the government's purse, but ring fenced for developments by individuals who can't afford to develop their own properties. But this whole thing needs to also account will be responsible back to any government department, including Treasury, who owns property, who's not done anything with it. So they have to pay the fine as well, which is taxpayers' money, though, bear in mind. But that money, instead of then going back into A and other, whatever the local decision is to I don't know, build a satellite station or something, it will go into fixing the problem. Going to the rateable system is the wrong thing to do. Very simple solution, but it chucks the bottle, it kicks the can down the road. 
doesn't solve any problems. The government is very happy to tell landlords, for instance, that they have to improve all their sites to this level and that level and the other level. What happens? The landlords stop renting because they don't want to spend all that money on something. Care homes have to close. But when it comes down to government-owned properties or council-owned properties, it's not applied. It's not applicable. They have one rule for everybody else and another rule for government, which is totally wrong, in my opinion. And they've never been able to explain their way out of that. No, because they they don't want to. They don't want to do it. Because they know if they have to do it, they'll cost them more money. And then they'll have to explain what what they've spent all this money on. Oh, it's our own rules that we spent the money on, because we decided that you as renters have to do this, this and this. But I, as the government, don't have to do this, which is wrong. That is completely wrong. The government owns dozens and dozens of sites, right? But doesn't have any plans for what to do with them. It built itself a brand new recycling centre, a new test centre, which was not necessary. Three million pounds to build a new test centre. Three million pounds to build a new recycling centre. Why? Because there was nothing really wrong with the old ones. I just, I, I'm, I'm just amazed. They just spend money like water because they can. But there's no regulation about how they control that cash, how it's divvied out. You would have thought, though, Tony, I mean, this is a fairly virtuous circle. If you can get rid of derelict and dilapidated properties by bringing them back to a standard where people can live in them, you'll have more people in houses, better-looking houses, and we'll look better. We won't have these kind of broken teeth for houses that we've got around the place. So it would seem that it's a really good idea. What's missing from the equation? What's missing is the money to do all these things. The previous gentleman just told you how much it's going to cost to build, buy all those properties for the Westmoreland Road idea. Where's the money coming from? Taxpayer. Wouldn't it be better to find those people who have got empty properties which are going derelict and put that money into a fund to basically develop the properties that are out there, either give out loans to people and or anything else. But putting it on rates is leaving it to the local government and saying you can go and charge somebody who's got an empty property. Well, that's, that's just not, not solving any problems. Okay. The government's got... Doesn't, I mean, you've only got to start the one end of the problem and go to the other and ask yourself how many government properties you've passed which are empty. I mean, Summerland's the first one. Mm. So what have they done about that? Absolutely nothing. Okay. All right, Tony, thanks for that. You're welcome. Bye. Good, good to hear from you. And David's with us now on Man in Line. Hi, David. I forgot his name now at the minute. Um, never. It'll come to it anyway. Um, regarding the properties there yeah. and the carrot and the stick, we need more carrots, as people are saying. We need to encourage people. Why threaten people who uh, maybe inherit a property or have a second property but can't, haven't got the money to do it up? Now, there is legislation under the Local Government Act for dilapidated properties, properties or ones that don't have uh, human uh, habitation certificates. So there is a law to go through for that. Now, Mr. Thomas, as far as I'm concerned, was going to upgrade that in the Local Government Act, the, the bills coming forward. I've not seen anything further to to assist on those and possibly and i'm only speaking uh, as an individual now we're probably not going we've only got about three properties two which have been gone going for a little bit of time i know about one of them it's not the particular person's fault because they're in a home uh, probably don't have the capacity or or relations to solve an issue so what do we do then just uh, find them when they can't even go to court or put a case towards something. The other one, I think, in Onken, which is very close to uh, to home here, that um, he's just been playing the system and playing it through the courts all the time and using loopholes, and he's doing the same, I, I'm almost certain, in Douglas. But when you look at the central government, like when Stephen says, who's got the money? 
for the nurses' home site. The taxpayers picking up the bill. Uh, this development corporation, which we can't get on the radio and question them about what the, the future is, of uh, how did they get the nursing home through planning with no parking? And they've got this thing, we're all going to have bicycles uh, near um, the main road. Uh, the other issue is Park Road School. There is a development plan, or was when I left, that's some time ago now, for to put um, some sheltered units on that and some uh, disabled bungalows for people who could um, live a proper life. The prison site is another one. Never mind the bus station and the two pubs we own. Mm. So, like the fellow said just before there, do we want to prosecute uh, individuals when you can't prosecute the government who are holding properties in our reserve and not doing nothing about them? And Summerland's another a prime example there. What are they doing? Let's this... Uh, I'm listening to Timble there. Nobody comes out and says, well, what are we doing? What is this quango of government is... Uh, we're funding with uh, thousands, never mind millions of pounds worth of money. Uh, what are they doing? What's the active list? I'm trying to remember, when was the last time anybody had a, a go at... Uh, I think, didn't somebody... Was it 15, 20 years ago? Somebody put forward a plan for Summerland, which was going to be apartments and a health yep. club and all sorts of stuff. And, of course, that didn't yeah. get anywhere. No. And quite a lot of the timber at the time was always there. I supported the idea. And what we've got to realise, too, when, you, when you've got developers out there who are spending their own money, they're not asking for uh, government uh, handouts and stuff like that, is they've got to be uh, a realist as regarding the golf links. Now, the particular company down there wants to redevelop down there and wants some, uh, what we call, uh, to sell units off. Yeah. Whether they're, they, you know, they need to make money at the beginning. They need to put a business plan together to their bank who's going to lend them money. And, they, and I appreciate Charles Gard's thing, but when you look at the, some of the sites they've, they've got now in Douglas in, they're down to liquidations. The company's gone into voluntary liquidation, where, where the one in town and the one on, uh, I think, near the Trafalgar. And uh, I can't see being any way out of that. It'll be the courts. And at the end of the day, it'll, somebody will buy the, the asset for um, peanuts, but will he have the money to do it? And I, I can't believe, I know Charles is wanting to put 100000 as a, maybe a, as a deposit, as a scheme. But can you imagine if somebody, like, uh, I wanted to do something, and uh, I wanted to build something, but I've got probably, I haven't got in the bank 100000 right? But I want to do that. But the government say, you've got to deposit that with me. So the bank says, you've got no money to build the property now. What are you going to do with that? Well, we'll see. David, thanks for well, calling today. Andy, uh, sorry, sorry, Andy. One, one thing I was going to say to you, too. Now they've changed the rules petitioning Timble Day on our national day. Yeah. We don't have to be um, related to the issue. And civil disobedience, I'm not encouraging it. But what you could do is put some uh, petitions to Timble to say, you know, what are you doing with this site? What are you doing with that site? I might do a couple myself <laughs> and see how... Many politicians will pick up the cudgel when they're involved. All right. Thanks, David. It's See just you. There. All right. It's 21 minutes uh, before one o'clock. Uh, tomorrow, it's a special assisted dying on the Isle of Man, man in line tomorrow. Trevor Moore and Baroness Finlay, a crossbench peer from the UK House of Lords, going to be on the Isle of Man and talking about assisted dying. Uh, Baroness Finlay is against it. She calls it assisted suicide. Trevor Moore uh, advocates it. So uh, if you've got an, uh, an opinion, then we'd really like to hear it tomorrow. A sister dying on the Isle of Man uh, ahead of this new legislation, the new private members bill that Dr. Allenson is uh, aiming to push forward. Next Wednesday, David Ashford, MHK, former uh, minister, three-time minister, now prominent backbencher, will be on Man in Line. And a week tomorrow, Charles Gard, the heritage campaigner, uh, the man behind those videos, will be on Man in Line. And we've been talking about the airport, but there's some good news regarding the airport. If you like a stroll that is, uh, there are going to be some closures of footpaths around Ronaldsway Airport you need to be aware of. Uh, the runway headland at the airport is going to be closed over this weekend uh, Saturday and Sunday 24th, 25th. It's to enable the Coast Guard to do rescue rope training uh, between 9 and 6 every day. The course is going to affect the section of the footpath from the Cafe Bar 26 to the northern end of the Rock Armour by Turkeyland's Quarry.
Now, this type of training is required in order to have an up-to-date rescue plan for an incident on the rock armour and to adhere to the airport licensing requirements. So that's this weekend. Uh, the footpath is closed from 9 till 6 uh, from the Café Bar 26 to the northern end of the rock armour by Turkeyland. You can get the best of everything And the price is just as nice Oh, I'm so glad we went to Pace Setter. The perfect shower, some great tiles, all the accessories we needed. They had it all. Amazing ranges from traditional to modern, many exclusive to Pace Setter. Get your bathroom on song. Visit the Pace Setter showrooms at Harris Terrace and Spring Valley. You can get the best of everything Where the price is twice as nice Nearly as good as me. Give your home a facelift with Manx Glass and Glazing. Whether choosing aluminium or UPVC in traditional or contemporary styles, you can be sure of excellent workmanship and guarantees. Members of Construction Isle of Man and family run for over 30 years, Manx Glass and Glazing are committed to the local community and they invest in future generations through their apprenticeship scheme. Visit the impressive showroom on Snugborough Trading Estate. Trust Manx Glass and Glazing. Quality and style since 1986. Running a business is always tough, but these days it seems to be getting harder. Keeping on top of sales, recruiting staff and trying to keep up with the accounts can mean that there just aren't enough hours in the day. One phone call to Shimin Wilson, a Manx firm of chartered accountants and business consultants, is all you need. Shimin Wilson can help you with an extensive range of accountancy-related services and a team on hand to help you through these tough times. Your peace of mind is only one call away on 627744. RS Promotions presents A Night of Disco Fever with Boney M featuring Maisie Williams in the Royal Hall Villa Marina on Saturday 8th of July. Get your dancing shoes on for all the classic hits live plus your 70s and 80s disco favourites from special guests Soul Kind of Wonderful and an after show DJ. Book now at villagaity.com or on 600 treble 5. The legendary Boney M featuring Maisie Williams supported by your nation station Manx Radio. On Manx Radio and Radio Caroline. Radio Caroline North. Caroline North is live this weekend from the Ross Revenge with the greatest music from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and just into the 90s. We got virtual money to give away to spend in the Caroline web shop, and the whole weekend is sponsored by Turton Tower Woodland Cafe. Join us live from the Ross Revenge online on your smart speaker on 648 1368 and DAB on the Isle of Man. The Man in Line. Daily interaction, debate, and exchange of ideas. Yes. Broadcast on Manx Radio from midday till one, Monday to Friday. Uh, Faster Mike, good afternoon. Wolf's back. Hi, Wolf. Hi, yeah. Uh, um, I just heard just talk about Summerland on there. Yeah. Well, that is just holds very bad memories for me because I was there. And um, I think that the cliff face should be tidied up, all them rubble taken away. And it turned into a children's play area uh, and a monument put up to the people that lost their lives there. It's an enormous place, though. I mean, it's it's uh, it's kind of, um, when you look at it, 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 it doesn't appear that big, but get in there. It goes on forever inside that side, doesn't it? Yeah, yes, well, then they, uh, that's, that's, they, could, they could make a right play area for the kids and plenty of parking for the mothers. So, uh, a su- not done nothing uh, with it up to now, so uh, why not do something in there? That's a simple thing to do with it. Like a Summerland Memorial Garden and Playground. That's it. Hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, I mean, Wolf, you were you were there yeah. on the night. Yes. Yeah, I've seen it all happen. Were you inside or outside? No, I was uh, nearby. And I watched, I watched the top four explode with the children all running about in the top of it. Wow. All right. Wolf, I appreciate that. Thanks for calling. Okay. All right. Cheers. Now, the Isle of Man government, by the way, is um, trying to find uh, survivors and members of victims' families because the 50th anniversary 
of the Summerland Fire 50 years ago is on the 2nd of August this year. 2nd of August 1973 it was, the Summerland Fire. The focus of the commemoration is going to be a National Service of Remembrance at 4 o'clock on Sunday 30th of July at St George's Church in Douglas. And remember, uh, St George's Church Hall, um, what is now Bar George, was used um, for laying out a lot of the bodies from Summerland. It was a, a grim, grim sight. The National Service of Remembrance is going to be an opportunity to pay tribute to those who died, survived or responded to the fire. If you want to get in touch, by the way, you can. There's an email if you want to just express some opinions and even if you're unable to attend in person or would prefer not to, you're invited to make contact and allow the team Possibly if you want to tell them about the event, summerland50 at gov.im. It's summerland50 at gov.im. Or you can call the Summerland uh, line, if you like, 685706. 685706. In addition to the uh, National Service of Remembrance, a presentation will be made to the Emergency and Hospital Services on Monday 31st of July in recognition to their response to the disaster and supporting those affected. That's Summerland 50, crikey, 2nd of August 1973. We've got some special programmes coming up as well on Manx Radio to uh, commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Summerland fire. It's good to talk. It's how we get things done. So when you apply for a personal loan from Black Horse, you'll get support from one of our relationship managers who's there to talk you through your application. You could borrow up to £50,000 with up to seven years to pay it back and you could receive your money within 24 hours of approval. Ready to talk? Go to blackhorseoffshore.co.uk to request a call back today. Finance subject to status. Applicants must be 18 or over. Señores and señoritas, welcome to the Costa del Douglas for a first ever beach day. Slip into your flip-flops, grab your bucket and spade and come join the fun at Queen's Promenade Beach and Walkway Saturday, July the 1st with a full day of attractions for all ages. Free bouncy castle, children's beach games, kite building, beach fitness and yoga, sandcastle competitions, stalls, rock pooling, the opening of the new bathing platform and beach huts, plus much more. Check Facebook for all the details and updates. The first ever Douglas Douglas Beach Day, July 1st, presented by Douglas City Council and supported by your nation station, Manx Radio. Cancer Research UK's Relay for Life is back. Don't miss your chance to honour everyone who's been affected by cancer and the progress made in research. Unite with family and friends, set your team fundraising goal and join a celebration of community fundraising. Search Relay for Life Isle of Man and enter for free today. The Relay for Life, 26th August at the National Sports Centre. Your chance to help beat cancer. 85 miles, 24 hours. The Manx Telecom Parish Walk is on this weekend. As the cheers rise and here he comes, Paul Atherton wins the Parish Walk here on Douglas Promenade. It's one of the biggest events in the Manx sporting calendar and with well over a thousand people set to take part, it all gets underway at 8 o'clock on Saturday morning. And Manx Radio will be there every step of the way with live reports on air right through until the final competitors cross the finish line on Sunday morning. Morning. The 2023 Manx Telecom Parish Walk on air and online at manxradio.com. To do it twice in a row is just amazing. I'm so pleased, so happy. Thank you. The Man in Line with Andy Wint. 10 to 1. If you look under gov.im, says Dick, and read the services which are provided by each of the commissioners across the Isle of Man, as part of the commissioner's remit and responsibility listed along each one on the web is dealing with properties uh, which uh, are, quote, dilapidated unsightly properties and land. So legislation already exists. It's not just empty properties down the road from us. One such which has been used as a mini scrapyard with the roof tiles falling off. The commissioners know uh, that it is, but nothing is being done. Every time there's an election, the commissioners and MHKs visit these houses. They're the ones who walk by dilapidated and empty properties, and not one of the eyesores is dealt with. But they will stop you painting your house the 
wrong colour. But they see nothing if it's not painted and all the windows are rotten. Surely that can't be right, says uh, Dick. Uh, and uh, also, uh, one other place, uh, says this correspondent, 223, they should look at the pavements uh, around uh, Gravel Road House Drake. That area hasn't been weeded in yet. There's another dilapidated property. The old House Drake holiday camp. If you take a look over there, <laughs> looks like a film set down there. Uh, Stephen talks a lot of sense, says John. Uh, how on earth did we manage uh, at the airport without the, all this nonsense about having legal tea breaks? It's not tea. I think Gary Cobb stressed that, and so did Chris Thomas. It's not tea. It's fatigue breaks maybe if they just call them rest breaks um, could they not have a tea break in between a plane going out or coming in sounds simple I don't think it works like that though goodness knows what people think of our airport it's unbelievable can't believe the steam packet couldn't squeeze one single foot passenger on the boat under the circumstances of that poor doctor well, underneath the legislation, underneath having air traffic controllers, the Manx Civil Aviation Authority, um, and of course they then report into the UK Civil Aviation Authority uh, to make sure that all the uh, protocols and procedures are followed. And it's not quite simple, it's not as simple as having an air traffic controller just jump in. Uh, when somebody's coming in, there's um, different types of air traffic controller doing different jobs. I mean, really, at the end of it, we know, as the travelling public, there just aren't enough air traffic controllers. Everybody knows it. They are saving a fortune, it has to be said. If there should be, what, 15, 16 air traffic controllers and there are only eight, then 50% of the personnel cost is being saved. Uh, Julian's with us. Hi, Julian. Hi, Andy. Yeah, it's um, funny that uh, there's a shortage of air traffic controllers and a shortage of driving instructors as well. Seems uh, bizarre in the world of transport. Uh, well, I remember, I don't know whether you, when we were at Castle Russian High School, uh, and I think last year, the 16-year-olds were saying, you can wait two years to get a driving instructor nowadays. Yeah, I'm not surprised. It's, it's, um, it's a bit like that thing I told you about where they're stopping um, up to 125 motorcycles in 2030 and then the bigger ones after. Seems they don't want learners, it looks like. Can't, can't think of another explanation as to why you'd ditch the smaller, less polluting bikes before the big ones. Yeah, how strange. Mm. Uh, just a quick contribution for the property thing. Um, Charles Gard's excellent sequel, the uh, Welcome Back to the Isle of Man, um, home field that he was up in arms rightly about being demolished. Um, interestingly, something that I've noticed, um, the company that's listed on the planning application is called Homefield Care Limited, which was created in on the 16th of May 2019 under company number 017124V for Victor. Um, but coincidentally, exactly the same Live company, Homefield Care Limited, which was formed on the 15th of May 2016 under company number 013517V for Victor, is the company that's also making the Spaldrick Care Home at Port Erin. So is that a sign that this might be another arm's length uh, Alderman government company? I don't know, but um, it might be worth asking. It's just a question, really. Yeah, well, I mean, what what they will always say is that we, we need care homes. We're going to need more and more care homes every year. So it seems like that, you know, the fact that it's going to be a care home is in some way the answer to the fact that knocking down home field, I mean, that was a beautiful property. It was a gorgeous property. Yeah, shame about the... Um the other brownfield sites though isn't it well you just wonder and and i think this is the it as i say we'll be loving in i extend uh, the hand of friendship to our friends at the manx development corporation if they'd like to come in and just chat as to what they are doing and what their aims are for the future then we'd love to hear it okay all right thanks julian Thanks, Andy. Cheers. Good to hear from you. And hi to Ted, the IT guy, tuned in today. Nice to hear from you. Um, uh, Brookfield House in Foxdale has been empty for years, says uh, Texter698 as well. Uh, you forgot the very important World Championship event, talking about the parish walk on Saturday in the Island Games and the Southern 100. Saturday, the 8th of July, it's the World Tin Bath Championship, says Terry Kelly. Oh, I think Manx Radio is going to be there. I'm sure there are going to be 
is there. I think maybe even in the snake race, you never know. Uh, there can be absolutely no excuse, says Text of 557, for paint on railings. Surely get some paint on the railings. Luckily, the Victorians installed quality railings. Don't replace those quality railings with horrible poor quality ones. Just paint them, says John. Well, get the rust off first, I would advise. Joseph says, Andy, just a quick question for the audience. They may have the answer. What's the difference between assisted dying and assisted suicide? This is all semantics. Well, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Trevor Moore and Baroness Finlay, Elora Finlay, will be on Man in Line. We're talking about the assisted dying bill on the Isle of Man. If you have something you'd like to add to the discussion tomorrow, you can either text, email, call and WhatsApp tomorrow. Or in the meantime, you can email maninline at manxradio.com or leave a message on the answer phone on 682631. It's not a pleasant subject, but it's one we're faced with now with this impending legislation. And we'll catch you tomorrow at high noon. Thanks to Chris Quirk on the phones today. W-I-N-T.